the Oprah interview in 2013. That's where you decided to come yeah. clean. Timing was tough on that. Yeah. The reason that I decided to, to sit with her was that um, not because we did have an existing relationship and I liked Oprah. I like Oprah and I trust her. Um, but I knew that I was going to get sued. And I knew I was going to get sued six ways to Sunday. When the report came out and they stripped the titles, I, I fucking knew they were lining up. Right. And so you know what happens when you get sued. What's the first thing that happens? You get deposed. So did I want to sit with Oprah, who I liked and trusted, or did I want to sit in a, in a small room at a lawyer's office with a grainy video, some guy just hammering my ass and leaking the video? So I said, fuck it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to get it out there. You're glad you did it? It had to happen. Was she sympathetic? I think she was sympathetic. I think she felt a lot of pressure from the journal, you know, sports writers and journalists in the world to say, you give this fucker some softballs, you're done. And so right. she came out smoking, right? And, and a good friend of mine really sums it up this way, and I, and I believe this. He says, uh, for non-cycling and sports fans, it was way too much. Right. You're talking about EPO and transfusions and all. It was, they were like, whoa. And then for the cycling fan, it wasn't enough. You didn't right. say enough. You didn't, you didn't tattletell enough. You didn't rat enough. You didn't say enough. So no one was satisfied. Everybody's pissed. You went into the interview thinking, at least now people will feel satisfied. Fuck, I left there thinking, wow, that was, that was pretty good. And it was... It was <laughs> the the reaction it was, was brutal. Brutal.